Hello YouTube, Benchmade55 here. Well, in this video I'm going to show you how I made a cheese press out of some materials that I had laying around, some scrap materials from other projects, and some PVC pipe, and some old uh, pieces of wood, and some uh, dowels. Um, the reason I'm that I'm going to make this is because we've been having a lot of success with our goats and we're getting a lot of milk and it's filling up in the refrigerator and we don't know what else to do with it now because we've been having goat's milk to drink. Uh, Mrs. Benchmade's been making goat cheese and then she made a feta type cheese. So now we're ready to move on to uh, making hard cheese. So that's the plan. So I've been tasked with making a cheese press because I saw some of the prices and they're way over a hundred bucks to buy them new and who needs that when it's something you'll just use occasionally so i will show you what i did to build one uh, i came up with a lot of these ideas from uh, youtube and i'll put a little list underneath in the description so that uh, you'll know the the materials that i used so let's get started Okay, so what we're going to do next here is cut the other slot for the uh, leg on the bottom. Okay, that fits good. Then I'll have to cut it to size. This is purple heart here. And that is just the way and the color that God made it. Very cool. Okay, so I'm taking a piece of the uh, scrap pipe that I have left over. And we're going to trace a line around here. And this is some old uh, piece of butternut that I have left. And so we got a line going around here. Then I'm going to take the jigsaw and go around here and start uh, cutting this out. Okay, we'll start the dust collection up and we'll sand this down uh, to a little bit smaller than the line so that it will fit freely inside this piece of uh, six inch. Okay, so you can see that this looks like it is going to fit perfect. Let's see where we go. So, okay, so what we're going to do next is take this uh, board here, and you can see the edge right here, and you see that it is uh, very sharp corners and edges on there, and so we're going to run it on the router and uh, we're going to uh, use a roundover bit 
and uh, that'll make it nice smooth on there. So now you can see if you look at that corner there, there we go, see how nice and, and rounded over that is with a little bit of sanding uh, to clean it up. That's going to be very nice to have a smooth edge on there. Okay, so we'll get started here on uh, drilling the holes for the posts. Uh, this will be on the base. Okay, well, uh, those turned out nice. This is a Forstner bit that I'm using on here, and it works uh, really well in a drill press and makes a really nice hole in there, as you can see. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing next is uh, sanding some boards down. Um, I have this sander that is a major blessing to have. It, uh, as you can see here, it has a... Uh, dust collection hooked up to it and then it has this sanding uh, bar that goes along here and I can put different grits of sandpaper on here. So you lay the board on here and I'll start that up and that's a conveyor belt. And so that moves along and that will feed the wood in. Then when I turn this on that will spin around and that will sand the wood, and then the dust collection will pull all the dust out of there. Sanding is a hard job in uh, woodworking, and one that I don't enjoy that much. And so this machine is just unbelievable for that. Plus, it makes the wood so that you don't have any divots or anything in there. Uh, where with hand sanding, you could push a little hard or or do anything. So let me turn on my uh, dust collection here and run this through and show you how this works. already the difference in the grain uh, now that it's just getting a little bit cleaned up. So we'll move it down a little bit and run it through again. I can run it through, that's the fastest speed, or I can slow it down and run it at a slower speed if it's a uh, hard wood. Another one right underneath it. Okay, so I got this all finished and uh, all assembled. Everything's glued together. Uh, the dowels are all in there. The feet are in there. You can see them on the bottom in the, in the dado that I cut. And um, 
everything's nice and flat. I put this on there as a finish. This is a, a Minwax product that I like. It's called Polycrylic and it's a water-based finish. I used a clear semi-gloss. Alright, so let's see how this thing's going to go together. So I found this plastic tub. I don't know how well that will work, but we'll uh, use that for the time being. So then we take the uh, six inch PVC, pop that in there. Then we put in, uh, we'll, this is what we'll do. I got a block of wood here and that will simulate the cheese and this will simulate the cheese cloth. Wrap it up, pop it in there. Then we put the follower in there and the other part of it. And so that will act like a piston compressing the cheese. That's the plan. And then the next step is going to be this piece, which I don't have a name for, but whatever. That goes in there, and it's a little uh, out of whack there, but that's because it's the way it is. I guess it'll get flattened out as you go along. And then I have the weight to put on there. So let's see, that's 10 pounds. 20 pounds, 30 pounds, you know I can lift these up because I practice with these and it makes me strong. So let's see, 10, 20, 30, 5, 45, pretty good the math, huh? And I think 50 pounds is the, uh, uh, the most that you need to make uh, the the cheese. Anyway, that's what I see in the um, in the book. So there you go. It looks like it works well, and it's uh, these little feet helped on here. So it's now uh, it doesn't have much wiggle to it or anything. So it's not going to fall over either which way. And it looks like it was a success. And also I have this other piece of wood that we can use, and I could use that little piece of three inch pipe in there and make. Uh, if you want to make a smaller ball of cheese, whatever the chef wants to do. I, I don't have any clue about any of that stuff. So there it is. Uh, let's uh, take it apart and see how it, uh, it disassembles. Now the cool thing about this is uh, it didn't cost me a nickel to build because we had all this stuff laying around. And um, so that's what you can do with scraps. That's why I try to save everything within reason that I think that I might be able to use um, down the road for something else. Because living on the homestead, you never know what you're going to need. And you don't want to be running to the store all the time for a little item because the store is not close. So you have to be creative and use what you have. Okay, so it seems to be coming apart just fine and dandy. I think that this is uh, going to be a success. So just like if uh, this was the real deal there, you just take it apart, take up your cheese cloth, and voila, cheese. Look at this, two different kinds. Mozzarella, extra sharp cheddar, pre-packaged. This thing works really well. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video and that you learned something about making a cheese press. And um, if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll try to answer them because I am not an expert at this at all. This is the first time, uh, but just giving it a whirl here. And uh, so please like, share, and subscribe to my videos if you enjoy it. Uh, Benchmade 55, out. Well, that's not supposed to happen.